Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. We are back in my kitchen for another home DIY project, but today we are tackling my countertops. So as you can see in the background, I already have them taped, sanded, all the things, they are prepped and ready to go. So if you don't know how to prep them, I have an entire paint and prep with me that I will have linked in the description bar so you can go back and look from when I painted our entire kitchen. So if you haven't seen that two day kitchen makeover, make sure that you go and check that video out as well. But we are going to be painting our countertops today with a Gianni countertop paint kit. And I'm so excited to see how this turns out. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so what I love about this kit is everything is numbers. So it's really easy and I feel like it's going to be hard to mess up. But <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't say that because then I'll mess it up. But anyway, so here is everything that is included in the kit. First thing you get is this primer. It's a roll-on primer labeled number one and it is a black base coat. Then you get the Greystone. It's labeled 2A and this stuff you're going to sponge on with the sponge they provided. Then you have 2B, which is also a sponge on. And then you get two of the white, which is the 2C. So you're going to sponge on A, B, and C. And then the last step, you're going to use the glitter coat. Also included in the kit is a roller and two foam rolling heads. And then your sponge ball. And this, you do get a sponge brush as well to do the corners and stuff. And the last thing included in the kit is this black little piece of cardstock so that you can practice on just in case you wanna try it out before actually putting it on your countertops. And that is everything included in the kit. So here is the before. If you look up close, you can see there is some stains on the counters. This is the other countertop. I just pulled it out to make it easy and I don't have to worry about taping any of the appliances. So let's get to it. So as stated in the instructions, we're gonna go ahead and take the black primer and just go ahead and roll it on. I found this stuff was very tacky, very sticky. And so it was a little bit tricky for me to work with compared to what I am used to. I am definitely not a painting professional, but you definitely have to and want to do a nice thick coat of this. So make sure that you get it nice and thick and you can't see any of, you know, in my case, white underneath the counter. Once you get the black coat on that one, it is super easy to do. This is where it gets a little bit trickier is when you have the little lip here. So you wanna go ahead and take that sponge brush and really get it on the top and then you'll see in the crease there. And then you wanna go ahead and roll. So you'll see that's what I did here. And then I found it to be easier to actually just take my little foam brush and go in there and finish up the little areas. The thing with this base is you have to work very quickly as it does dry fairly quick. So just know that going into it and you wanna make sure that you don't have any harsh lines. So again, you gotta work really quickly. For the rest of the counter, I ended up painting with the foam brush, the edge as you can see here, as well as the top part of my counter that lifts up. And then I rolled on just the flat surface there again, as you can see here. Let me know in the comments which Gianni countertop paint kit you ended up going with. We are using the white diamond kit and I am so excited to share with you guys how it turned out. So stay tuned for that. Here is what the countertop looks like once you have primed it, and you're gonna let that sit there for eight hours before starting to use the paint. All right, so now that the primer is dry, it is now time to tackle the paint. So we're tackling these three colors here. I would recommend putting them in a little paper plate dish like I did here. And then we're gonna take this little ball here and cut it into four different squares. Starting off with the first color here, I am going ahead and sponging it on. You wanna make sure that there is not a lot of black in there 
and you will see here I ended up doing this two different ways so make sure that you stay tuned to see how they both turned out as I do show them both and you can let me know which one you like better but again I'm just going ahead with the first color and really working it in moving my sponge it might be hard to see on camera but kind of going in different directions and making sure you don't smudge it Then going in with the second color, I'm going right over top of that, again working very quickly as this stuff works really, really good when you use the colors wet. So some people think that you can go ahead and just do the one color and let it all dry and then go over it with the second color and then the third, but that's actually not what they recommend doing. So make sure that you work with this really quickly as it will not only look so much better, but it will also just be a lot easier for you to use. Once you get all three colors, it is time to move on to your next section. I recommend doing this as stated on the package, which is two by two feet sections. My first one obviously is a little bit little as I was just trying it out and seeing how easy it was to work with before I moved on to a bigger area. So you'll notice I did the rest of the cabinet all at once. Again, just making sure I'm blending the lines so that there's no harsh lines or anything. And I ended up putting quite a bit of gray on here as I wanted to see how it looked. And here we have the finished look without the top coat. Moving on to the next section of the cover, this is where it gets tricky as my counter obviously has that lip. Now this was a huge trial and error for me. As you will see, there is kind of a really harsh black line, which you'll see in the next clip. And so in order to get rid of that black harsh line there that you can see, I ended up cutting my fourth piece of the sponge into another four pieces and I ended up taking them one for each color and then one to blend and I got really got in there with it and it ended up working out great. So that's what I would recommend if you do have countertops like this one. They recommended going in with a foam brush but it would give a different look and I honestly could not get into the corner there with the size of the sponge that I had. So I took a little piece like this again and went and did the top piece of the countertop. I ended up sponging the entire top piece basically with these little sponges as it just worked better for me. Again, rotating the sponge so you don't have a consistency in the pattern of your countertop. Trust me, it'll look a lot more natural. Continuing on doing the same process on the rest of the countertops here, you will notice I ended up taping my sink. I would highly recommend it as it was a little tricky to get in behind there and it was also tricky to film that area. So that is why I didn't put it on camera. I had some footage and it just didn't turn out as I would have liked it to. So I ended up just taking the footage out completely, but here is what it looks like without the top coat. Let me know if you end up liking the light one or the dark one better. So then I'm going in as recommended and just giving it a really light sand to make sure that it is even and I'm going ahead and sanding the entire countertops again just very very lightly nothing crazy before going ahead and letting this dry before doing my glitter top coat. Y'all look at this top coat. When I first rolled it on you can see there is a blue tinge to it and I was a little nervous as it did alter the color of the countertop but it ended up drying clean. Clear. Now, if I would have read the instructions, it would have reminded me that it will go on like that. And I just assumed that it went on like that so that you could see where you had applied the top coat. Making sure you do a nice thick layer and then letting it dry. You can do 
two and up to three top coats, I ended up doing three. Then it was time to do some caulking, so we ended up taping it and just going ahead and caulking it really, really quickly. Again, it was really hard to get a good angle on camera. So then I'm going ahead and peeling the tape off, and here is the finished look. I hope that you guys enjoyed following this journey with me. I would definitely repurchase a kit. I would say though the paint was a little finicky. It was actually a lot harder than I expected it to be, but I am happy with the final results. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a big thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button for more homemaking, lifestyle, and home DIY. And we'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.